I'm going to throw in another element, which will seem annoying right now, but will actually make sense when we meet again next time and start looking at far more advanced integration by substitution. I will start using a different letter for the independent variable because I want you to get used to the fact that it could be X, it could be Y, it could be Z, and it makes no difference in the world. And it will actually help you next time. So how about this one? No difference between using Z and X in this context. Imagine if there was Z squared minus one on top. Would that solve all your problems? If it were, if it were Z squared minus one on top, if it were that, does that solve all your problems? Of course it does, because this gets factored into z minus 1 and z plus 1. The denominator is canceled, and you're just left with z minus 1, and that's very easy, right? So you wish you could have this, so by all means have it, just make up for it with a plus 1. And so the whole expression becomes what we just discussed. Well, let me show it. Right? That's all we did. So, we threw in a minus one and to make up for it a plus one, then grouped the numerator in this fashion. This, we're just going to do this in our head entirely. It's basically z minus one because the denominator cancels. So this is z minus one, and the integral of that is one half z squared minus z. And the integral of this is an innocent log, log of z plus one. There you go. <clears throat>